you know why there's an alcoholic gene? It's there for a reason. Mm -mm. So you see the alcoholic gene more frequently, and you know you can call it the addict gene or the alcoholic gene, more frequently in populations where there's a lot of external pressure, like violence and um, very extreme circumstances. So the Irish, Native Americans, Russians, um, Russians, yeah, just lots just of pressure there un under extreme Ukrainians, duress. lots yeah, people, of pressure. A lot there. of people getting killed. So the people who performed better under pressure tended to have the alcoholic gene. This is why all our top fighter pilots are in World War II and stuff were all alcoholics and why like Audie Murphy, like the number one out of 11 million soldiers in World War II, he was the number one most decorated soldier. And they still have like Audie Murphy Day in the army and stuff like that. Is there an alcoholism or what we would say now an alcohol use disorder gene? Uh, the answer is no. There is no single gene that uh, is, determines, certainly, or even has a do dominant influence on whether or not somebody is susceptible to alcohol use disorder. Scientists have identified about 400 genes that have a statistical association with the risk of developing alcohol use disorder, and over like 500 and something different loci on those 400 genes. So, yeah, nothing as complicated as a behavior like that is going to be a single gene. Right, it's always going to be multiple genes. Most of those genes, by the way, uh, are involved in the metabolism of alcohol. Right, they're just they influence the body's biochemistry, how we deal physically with the alcohol itself. They're not genes which influence our neurological function. Um, but you know, he brings up a, a, a hypothesis here that whether it's one gene or 400 genes or whatever, that some of those genes, let's say, if we try to give the, put the best face on his claim as possible, that um, also predisposes people to being able to deal well with stress. So that doesn't hold up well to the evidence. In fact, the opposite is true, that people who have a lower ability to deal with stressful situations are more likely to have alcohol use disorder. That, that pretty much falsifies his hypothesis. It's the opposite of what's true. Essentially, that's because if you don't deal well with stressful situations, you are more likely to self-medicate with alcohol or to turn to alcohol as a way of dealing with that stress. People who are more resilient to stress are therefore less likely to use alcohol as a crutch, if you will, or whatever, to, to fall into alcohol use disorder as a response to the stress itself. And again, this is only looking at alcoholism or alcohol use disorder from one angle. You could also look at it from many other behavioral angles, such as executive function. Do people who have ADHD, are they more likely to have alcohol use disorder? Yeah, it turns out they are, probably because they have reduced executive function. And, and that would you know, help you control strategically your impulses, your desires, or whatever, a long-term planning sort of thing. So Psychological, neurological function is always complicated. There are many different things happening at the same time. There's neurological predispositions, but then they interact with the environment. That's the whole point of the brain, if you will, is to interact with the environment. So it's always going to be a complicated um, factor, you know, looking at multiple, both biological and environmental factors, any complicated behavior like alcohol use disorder, or just addictive behavior or whatever. Um, so... No single gene, it's 400 genes that have been identified, you know, or more or less that, that uh, correlate with the risk of developing alcohol use disorder or addictive behavior. And no, it's not tied to, re to increased resilience. In fact, the opposite's true. It's people with less stress resilience who are more likely to, to develop alcohol use disorder. So this guy is just making stuff up.